All right, here we are again in LX Beams. Again, we're looking at Blythe and Burt, the full example file. Um, today, I want to talk to you a little bit about magic sheets. The last time we were together, we looked at your lighting areas. So we had split up the stage into lighting areas uh, one through nine. You had probably added maybe 10, 11, and 12 um, for my advice. So we're gonna talk about adding your magic sheet information. So I'm gonna go back to the full plot view, because yeah, we've talked about saving views. There I go back to the full plot view. And notice my light plot snapped back in. That's because it was active when I saved this view. But if I wanna turn it off for now, and click off and my light plot goes away. Um, we might wanna use this to get our information for a magic sheet. But I know the channel numbers that I've given all these things. So um, uh, remember that the magic sheet is about creating a channel number system. Let's uh, review that for just a second. So when we went over magic sheets in class, we remember that we talked about creating lighting areas and then hanging lights for those lighting areas. Um, we talked about patching them into the circuit and the dimmer that was close by. But then we also talked about giving them a different number for the channel that helps you make sense of what they're all used for. That's information that gets created in your instrument schedule uh, and your channel hookup. Once you have changed the channel number for each instrument, using the channel control function in the lighting console. So that's what helps me create a magic sheet that helps me make sense of a huge light plot. So like for instance, if I wanted to remember how to turn on all of these blue lights um, without having to remember all that separate circuit and dimmer number, I can change the numbers of them. Here in this case, this designer has started with the number 41. So he knows that all those blue top fills are 41 through 53. So here they've used a sequential pattern for their magic sheet. So 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. They've renamed all of these lights in the board to control with these channels to be able to keep it simple and to be able to turn them on without knowing all that dimmer and circuit number. So here's some examples of magic sheets. This is what a full magic sheet might look like across all your different systems. And what I mean by systems, again, remember is front warm, front cool, top light, back light, specials, practicals, gobos, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is a really large light plot for a really large lighting design. You can see here, there are probably several hundred lights in this lighting design. Most of our lighting di designs are a lot smaller for the Burt Theater. But this is an example of a magic sheet for a really pretty large plot. Um, here's a zoom in of some of that information from this larger sheet. So you can see here that there are top strips um, are numbers one, two, three, and four. Their front cools start with 61 and go through 71. Now this lighting designer has chosen to use a sequential set of numbers, which is not how I've advised you to do it, but there's a lot of different ways, methods. Remember, this is about choosing a method that simply just makes all of that channel and dimmer number information easy for you to remember. Here's another example that we looked at. This is the magic sheet from the ACDA Dance Festival. Uh, we talked about, these are all the trees here. So the shins are one, two, three, four on stage right, five, six, seven, eight on stage left. So they know the shins are one through eight. The mids are 11 through 18. Look how these numbers mirror. So this starts with a one, this starts with a one, one, that starts with a two, one, it ends with an eight a 1-8 and a 2-8. So they've created a system here knowing that the mids are one through eight, 
sorry, the shins are one through eight, the mids are 11 through 18, and then the heads are 21 through 28. I think this could even be more simplified if all of these were even and all of these were odd or vice versa. But again, you're creating a system here that, you, that helps you remember where those channels are. The system doesn't really matter as long as it is a system that simplifies all that circuit and dimmer information. Here's another system. Again, they've used sequential. And I have added um, on Moodle, under your final resources, um, lots of examples of magic sheets for you to take a look at. Lots of different systems. But one thing is in common, they show a simple way for you to understand which lights point in which direction so that when you're programming your cues, you're not trying to remember all the channel and dimmer information. So there's a lot of different ways that you could potentially do this. So let's look at our example. So let's go back to our light plot. The system that I've talked to you for you to use is to think about where all of your lights land in your lighting areas and what their purpose is, which means if you want to make all the warm fronts end in a one, then the warm front for area one should be one one or 11. So the warm front for area two would be 21. The warm front for area three would be 31. 41 for the next area, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I've started to put a few of these in here. Let's look at an example that I have created. Let's drop in here to the ground plan view. And let's turn our light plot off. And let's turn our um, top light magic sheet on. So I decided that all of my top light was going to end in the number five. So the number five tells me it's a top light. So you notice here I have the number 15, the number 25, 35, 45, and 55. What this is telling me is this is area one, top light, channel 15 in the board. Area two, top light. 25. So if I turn my lighting areas back on, you'll see how that corresponds to area one, area two, area three, area four, area five. Let me turn that off so it's not so crowded. And all I've simply done is created uh, a magic sheet where those channel numbers are overlaid. And again, here I'm looking at the top light for each one of our areas. So let's say for instance, I wanted to start putting in my warm front magic sheet lights. I'm gonna grab one of these numbers right here and I'm just gonna copy it um, so that it makes it easy for me to create the same size um, font and lettering on the next page. So I don't wanna look at my magic sheet for top light anymore. I wanna work on my magic sheet for the warm front. So I'm gonna click on the radio button because that's the active layer that I wanna work on. And I'm just gonna turn my top lights off on my magic sheet. On my warm front, I'm simply going to paste that 15 that I copied over, right? Except this time, it's not a 15, it's not a five, it's not a top light. It's a warm front. So this guy wants to be 11. Great. Um, I'm gonna actually change the color of this guy so that each one of my magic sheets looks a little bit different. If you wanna get really precise, you can put these in the color of the lights that are there. So my light there is sort of a warm amberish light. So that's what I'm gonna use for the magic sheet. Great, and I'm gonna grab this guy and I'm gonna copy and paste him over here in area two. 
and he is an area two front light. Bam. I'm going to click in area three, copy and paste. Area three, front light. Area four, paste. Area four, front light. Bam. Area five, paste. Area five, warm front. So here I've started my magic sheet and I'm drawing on my warm front layer. So this is creating my magic sheet for me. Um, 1, 21, 31, 41, 51. And of course, I would continue on my system all the way into all the 12 areas that I've created. Uh, now, if I want to turn my uh, top light back on, let's see where those were. And I don't want them transposed over each other. But again, if I'm working on my warm front, I can make this a little cleaner if I want to. Put them all in the same areas. Move that guy. Move that guy. And you see why it's not moving. It's not moving the purple letters because it's not an active layer. It is on and I can see it, but they're not moving. I can't click on them and move them because it's not an active layer. Again, I've made a little bit of progress, so I'm gonna save my file. And I'm gonna turn my top light layer off. And again, now I'm just seeing my magic sheet for the warm fronts. Right, and I can export this as a PDF and call it Blythe and Burke Warm Front Magic Sheet, something that makes sense. Export it as a PDF and it is ready to submit with my final. Of course, I would complete this for all the warm fronts. I would complete this for all the cool fronts and notice I haven't done anything on that layer yet. Uh, I would do it for all my top lights. I'd do it for all my backlights, all my specials, all my practicals. Anything that I add into my plot, I would make a magic sheet for that system. Why do we have a warm front, a cool front, a top, and a back, et cetera, et cetera? Because McCandless theory tells us we're supposed to have. And that's what we're gonna use for the basis um, of our plotting. For now, uh, basic lighting design starts with McCandless theory. So that's a quick way I can create those magic sheet layers in LX Beans. Hope that was helpful to you. Good luck.